Hello, I'm back. Welcome. everybody welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Madison Page and let's just jump into the video so as you may notice I am wearing the same clothes I was on the last video um, I'm pre-filming for like the first time in ages because it's my mum's birthday this week so here I am today's video is going to be a medical disabilities type Q&A I forgot to post the asking for questions earlier so I only have like a few questions though to be fair it took me like four months to gather up enough questions for a Q&A last time so I probably wasn't gonna get any more than this however if I do get more before uploading I will do like a little editor Maddie segment where I answer that question but yeah let's just jump straight into it first question so I want to say no a lot of my surgeries happened when I was too young to comprehend what was happening so I don't remember them I mean I don't remember many things anyway but I definitely don't remember them. I have only ever been scared in one surgery, potentially two surgeries, but I was kind of scared for my back one, but like not really. Like I'd been told all of the like possible complications and I did my usual thing where I prepared for the worst. So I was fully expecting to not wake up or wake up paralyzed. I guess I was more scared for like my mum rather than myself, or, like my dad, my mum, my my family that was there to support me because I don't ever actively remember feeling like super scared for myself during surgeries because I was kind of okay with whatever happened. The second surgery might have been my back surgery but I don't think so. It was after that and I'm not super sure what happened but like the anesthetic was working like really really slowly. Like I can tell when I'm about to like be knocked out right. Again I don't know if that's like a common thing or if that's just what happens when you've had lots of surgeries. But with this particular surgery, it was happening like really, really slowly and it felt, how do I word this in a way that won't make you terrified? But it, it kind of felt like I was being slowly like sucked away, like little pieces of me being taken away one at a time and I got really scared I started hyperventilating and calling to my mum and I think they figured out what was happening because the second I started panicking I was like gone but like before I was just straight knocked out it was like I was being like sucked away and it was it was really fucking scary and now I get triggered by the smell of anesthetic. I haven't really been scared of surgeries since. Actually, that's funny. I just said that I'm scared and like triggered by the smell of anesthetic, but I'm not when it's like in a surgical situation. If I'm like outside of a hospital and I smell a smell that's like similar to that, cause it's like a weird strawberry bubblegum kind of chemically kind of smell. If I smell a smell that's like similar to that outside of the hospital, then I get really like, you know, fucked up. There's actually one cupboard in this house that I can't go into because I don't know if it's one of my nanny's cleaning products or something but it smells very very similar and I can't go into that cupboard without being a mess. There are the odd occasion where I have to go into that cupboard so I'll go in and hold my breath which again not like ideal given I can't breathe ever but usually like 90% of the time I personally am not scared of surgery however I can't say how you're gonna feel I'm not you everyone's different everyone has different fears 90% of the time I am not scared of uh, um earthquakes I'm not scared of surgery but you might be and that's okay I'm, I'm technically still recovering. Hardest part of recovering from back surgery, probably learning to walk again. You, you kind of have to reteach yourself how to walk and especially for me because I'd been on a wheelchair for a week and a half before that. So I hadn't walked for almost two weeks and now I had this thing in my back which completely changed the way I moved. So yeah, reteaching myself how to walk. I did have a really attractive physical therapist, so that was somewhat helpful. But yeah, I think that was that was the hardest. I think one of the hardest things now is it's like anti-recovery, but as I get worse, the things that I used to be able to do, I can't do them anymore. So like as each thing becomes so that I can't do it anymore that's super hard. I mentioned in my last couple of videos that I can't do my own shoes, I can't wipe my own ass without a fucking 
want to hold the toilet paper. Recently I have been struggling to put on my own pants. So I'm just, I'm slowly losing access to the lower half of my body and that's, it's not a fun time. Back when I was younger, I don't think I mentioned this in my scars video, but fun fact for now, if you have a stomach feeding tube thing, when you take it out, the scar generally tends to close to look like a second belly button. Obviously mine doesn't now because there was a complication where it didn't close properly so they had to, they had to fix it and now it's like a line. But before it was like a second belly button, some dickhead saw me getting changed one time and pointed out my second belly button and then told the rest of the school about my second belly button. So I was getting a lot of questions about asking to see my second belly button. And I just, I really hated that and I wished people would not ask me to see my second belly button. For now, I guess. No, now I'm, I'm less annoyed by questions and more annoyed by like people who think I'm faking. Cause of course most of my disabilities are invisible. So you get the occasional look or like the, you look fine, that's annoying. I do get a little bit flustered sometimes because as we've established, my memory in general, but mostly with this stuff is not great. So I can get a bit flustered when people ask me any questions because I often don't know the answer. I've left my write-ups of my scoliosis and my MND on my phone so that now if people ask me stuff I can pull them up and like answer. But before I couldn't and I always got really just kind of overwhelmed and flustered because I didn't I didn't know how to explain myself. In Wellington it was really hard because I didn't know how to explain to my new doctor all of my things. But specific questions I don't I don't think there's anything that I'd get like really put off of. I've already answered this question before and at the time I said no, but that was actually because I didn't know the definition of chronic pain. I thought it was something that like, something specific that you had to get diagnosed with. But the specific definition of chronic pain is persistent pain that lasts anywhere between several weeks to several years. And so if I'm going by that definition, yes, yes, I would say I have chronic pain. So that's in reference to part three of my disabilities videos. If you haven't seen part one and two, I would have put them up there throughout the video. There should be a little eye in the corner, that corner maybe, that you can click on and it shows you what cards have been shown so far. But part three is going to be about my respiratory issues and how doctors realized that I couldn't breathe normally and about like my throat and my trachea and the reconstruction and all of that. However, I'm currently dealing with an issue related to it that I'm not really ready to talk about, but I don't feel like I can do the video without mentioning it. So that's why I'm doing this instead. However, whenever I do do that video, there might be an exciting announcement that comes with it. We will just have to see. Um, my dad came to surprise me once. He surprised me and that was nice. Or... So the hospital that I was in a lot of the time is called Starship Hospital in Auckland. It used to be a specialty hospital. Now it's just like a general kids hospital. But it used to be only for like the super, the super severe cases of whatever or the super rare cases or whatever and I fit into both of those categories. But they used to do this thing, they probably still do, where they'd get a whole bunch of celebrities in at Christmas time and I happened to be there one Christmas. So I got to meet a whole bunch of celebrities. Though it's, New Zealand doesn't have celebrities like America has celebrities. Our, our celebrities celebrities are not big. It's usually just like all blacks or short on the street people. Nation Mystic when they still existed, which is a band, TV show hosts, that sort of thing. So like, yeah, they would come and they would give out lucky dip presents and I met Susie Cater. Kids would get autographs. I have a whole book of autographs somewhere and they just hang out. So I was there for that one time. They also just kind of have celebrities come in every now and then just cause. 
so I happened to be there when another singer came by one time. But I don't think I have a lot of like happy memories from the hospital. Least favourite memories. Every time I had to be nil by mouth, that sucked. My mum was good. She always, she'd fast with me. So like whenever I had to be nil by mouth for surgery, she'd stop eating as well. My dad, however, didn't make the same promises. But he at least would like go and eat somewhere else. But no by mouth was never fun. And no, again, I don't have many memories, so I can't think specifically of a least favorite one. Kind of just every time I'm in a hospital, if I'm gonna be honest. Least favorite memory in a hospital that's not actually to do with me was when I was being told that my dad was dying. But if we're talking about me, then I don't, I don't know. Those are all the questions for now. If I have any more questions come through, the next clip you'll see is Editor Maddie answering them. If I don't, then the next clip you'll see is me saying goodbye. So that was it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below your favorite comfort food. My favorite food to eat after surgery was either Burger King or there was this really good Chinese place across the street from Starship and they would do like the egg foo yong on top of the rice and it was just it was just it was really nice and the lady there actually learnt like my mum remembered my mum by her order and then of course she would take me once or twice in my wheelchair so whenever mum went alone the lady would ask her how I was doing and it was nice it was a nice meal served by a nice lady subscribe if you want tap the bell notification thingy to be notified every time I post and I'll see you next time bye